Hey guys, this is Scotty with Trek Pro City. Uh, today we are unboxing a Cirrus H3 trainer. Trainer season's coming up pretty soon. Uh, our boy Jesse here is buying himself a new trainer and we're gonna kind of just go through it. We chose the H3. We carry a couple of different models. The Wahoo Kicker Core is a popular one that we have in store. The Cirrus H3. Uh, the third one that we don't have right now, but will in the September, is the Elite Suito. They're all pretty similar. They're a wheel-off trainer, they're smart, they pair up with Zwift or Ruby or whatever kind of indoor training software you're going to use. We chose the H3, it's my favorite because it has the biggest flywheel. It feels the most realistic, like you're out, actually out on the road. The quality's been excellent, we've been selling them for several years. The warranty support is great. And yeah, it's an awesome trainer. So let's dig into the box and see what we get. First things first, we've got Jesse's bike here. Um, this unit does not come with a cassette, so we need a cassette on these devices. There's two ways to do it. You can use your existing cassette off your wheel, which is what we're going to do today, or you can buy a new cassette. The one thing that you need to kind of keep in mind is that if your cassette has quite a bit of wear on it and your chain has a bit of wear on it, you might want to use your old cassette. If you put a brand new cassette on and your chain's kind of worn, they might not mesh up too well. Um, I guess the other detail is make sure you have the same amount of speed. So if you've got a 10 speed system or an 11 speed system, you need to match it up with your bike. So the other detail that makes this a good trainer is that we have different end caps for different wheels. In this case, Jesse has a standard quick release road setup, so we're going to leave these on. But if you have a disc brake bike, which a lot of people do these days, that is one of the reasons for these trainers. It is so much easier to get the disc brake setup going. So we're going to put different axle end caps by unthreading and threading on the correct end cap. Okay, you got to go through the packaging and the instructions to figure out exactly which end caps you need. You can fit a mountain bike on here, you can fit a road, Disc, you can fit a gravel bike, um, you can pretty much fit any bike on these things, which is awesome. We'll put the quick release version back on for Jesse. Your legs fold out like so. Your front wheel block is stored underneath. It's lower than your standard front wheel block. Uh, these feet are adjustable, so if you have a wobbly surface, you can adjust them. I'm gonna put this in place about here. We're gonna set it up for this guy. Make sure that it's level. We're good. What else do we have in the box? We got our power cable. So this plugs into the back left of the unit and then up to the power source. Um, be careful with these. If you leave it plugged in all the time, this sticks out a little bit, it can get kicked. I actually recommend unplugging it when you're not using it. Pretty long cable. If your outlet is miles away, you might need an extension cord. And you get 30 day membership at Zwift with a, a code there. We got a green light, that means it's working. Yay! So basically the unit now is sending a signal out, Ant Plus or Bluetooth signal. Um, our computer will read that signal in theory, uh, but we gotta get this cassette onto the trainer first. This is almost a video on its own, but cassette changing. So first of all, we gotta get the rear wheel off the bike, so we open up the brake, which is already open. Uh, we are shifting down into our smallest cog on the back. Opening our quick release, which it's already open. Jesse is 
obviously an awesome at-home mechanic. <laughs> and pop that wheel out. Set up. And take the quick release right out. So I'm holding the nut, spinning the left side, all the way off. Crombie tool or a cassette lockering tool goes in the lockering. We want to turn it left, but the wheel spins, which is why we have a chain whip. I'm going to put our chain whip on pretty much any cog. Make sure it's wrapped on there pretty tight. And push down. Let's try that again. A couple spins and it comes right off. Now, uh, one thing, just a tip, the cassette will kind of come apart in a whole bunch of pieces, um, which is, you know, it's possible to get it back together, but it takes a while. The trainer has a little elastic band here. You want to get rid of that. That elastic band is holding on a cassette spacer. I don't actually remember if we need that spacer or not. Before we put it on, I'm going to spin this free hub and you'll notice that one of the lines is narrower than the rest of them. So now that I know where that is, there's only one that's that's narrower. I'm gonna peel the cassette off, hold it between my fingers, and I'm gonna look for the, the narrow one, which is on the inside there. And that way, when I slide this on, it is in theory not gonna come apart in 100 pieces. I feel like it's not on far enough so that spacer that was provided is probably for a 10 speed system and Jesse has an 11. So I'm going to take the spacer off. I think this lock ring fell out so it's not in the same spot. There's one little notch that's narrower than all the bigger ones. So that notch needs to go on the narrower notch up top there. Pops on. Get our lock ring that I dropped on the floor. Lock ring goes on. It should go on pretty smooth and easy. If it's really stiff, it's probably cross-threaded, so back it off and try it again. That should be tight. All right, cassette's on. This is a trainer quick release. You don't have to have that. You can have pretty much any quick release on here. If you're using your through axle disc brake bike, then you're just going to use the through axle that's supplied with your bike. Derail her down so that the chain goes below and above. Drops down over the top. Make sure it's lined up on both sides. Sitting down nice and firm. Hold on to that and spin the other side or spin this side. on the other side. Nice and tight. It's not quite on the gear, but once I start pedaling, it'll find its home. And there's a lot of tension on there, so before Jesse gets on, I'm gonna be kind to him and get it out of that gear. I got my front wheel block centered underneath. Up on. And shift it out of there. Good idea to kind of shift through the gears just to make sure that everything seems to be aligned and running smooth. Feels really good to me. So next up we're going to uh, see if we can get this whip set up and uh, get Jesse to hop on and try it out. All right, so all we did is turn on Zwift and it connected right away. So Jess's got a really sweet laptop here, MacBook Pro of some sort. Um, he's got an adapter because it doesn't actually have a USB. Uh, and then he's got a US, or an Ant Plus dongle here. So that's what I have at home is an Ant Plus dongle that I've plugged into the USB port of my laptop and that seems to do the trick. Um, you can do a Bluetooth dongle or an Ant Plus dongle, either one. Um, so that is something you need to purchase separately of the trainer. Um, some laptops 
will receive Bluetooth signals or Ant Plus signals on their own and you might not need that. You just gotta check with your device that you're using, whether it's an iPad or a tablet or a MacBook, or in my case, a, a PC. Uh, so we've, we've connected to the hammer. It's, it's got the signal there. It's, it doesn't have any watts, but you know, we can just hop on and start putting out some watts. And there you go, right away we got our power warming up. It's awesome. So it's controllable. Basically these devices will get harder when you're going uphill and get easier when you're going downhill. That's the beauty of these smart trainers. Um, we don't have a cadence or anything else paired because Jesse doesn't have any of those things, but if you did, you can search for it. I think he's got a cadence meter. Uh, yeah, so that's it. That was a pretty simple pairing. We've got the bike set up. Uh, a few things that I'd recommend at home. If you're gonna get this set up, it's the first time you've done it. Um, number one, get a fan. This is not like riding outside. You don't have wind coming at you. It gets really hot really fast. Even if it's cold in your basement or wherever you're doing it. Uh, I can't ride these things for more than about 25 minutes without a fan. It just gets crazy hot. With a fan, it's bearable for an hour or so. <laughs> um, get a towel. You're gonna sweat on your bike. Sweat is incredibly corrosive. It is terrible for your bike. Don't sweat all over your bike. Cover it with a towel. Wipe yourself off while you're riding. Try your best not to drool all over your bike. And if you do, get the bike serviced in the spring when you're not using your trainer. Get a new bar wrap. Get the boys downstairs to clean up the handlebars. Take your headset apart. Re-grease everything and clean all that salty corrosion out of your bike so it doesn't ruin things. We've seen some pretty gross stuff from people that have left their bikes too long. Tunes. Tunes are motivating. Get yourself some music, get a little wireless speaker, get your tunes going, that's always fun. All right, so we've got it all set up. I'm using Jesse's setup here on Zwift. We're riding in London, I just got smoked by that guy. He's moving fast. I'm pushing a whole 44 watts, so that's why. Yeah, the big thing that Jesse's gonna notice, he goes from an old trainer riding Zwift with no control to this setup is that the trainer's gonna get harder when we're going uphill and easier when we're going down. So we can tell if we're going uphill or downhill on the right. Right now we're on a 3% grade. It's up in that little screen on the top right. 3% is like pretty flat. So I can realistically be pushing this a lot harder. And I need to shift gears, right? Can't be in your easiest gear on a 3% grade. You gotta be in the bickering hammering. All right, now I'm gonna smoke these guys, although they've been probably riding for a while. Now we're riding London, which is really flat, and the most boring part of Zwift, in my opinion. But it looks like we're gonna to come to a bit of a downhill here, and you can just see, picking up speed, nice little downhill through the dip there. Yeah, that's the long and short of it. All right guys, that's our uh, Cirrus H3 rundown. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you wanna see more of our content, check out at Trek Pro City. Uh, we've got lots of these Cirrus H3s in stock, as well as some of the uh, Wahoo Kicker cores. Uh, come down to the shop, check them out. We can help you get set up. Thanks.